was a big map, it's what, seven feet by five feet, uh, say, and it was just falling apart. So I took it down to the library and I said, you know, can you do anything with it? But really, we thought, no, this is beyond repair. So really, rather than sit in my garage, I'll give it to them and they can have it for reference. I never dreamt they would be able to restore it. It's the story has grabbed not just people here today's attention, I think people all over the world have got to know about the chimney map. And they were uh, looking for the, the mystery man, the mystery man who Which handed in the map. <laughs> so I contacted the National Library and the library got some publicity out of the map, so it was. Whenever Les said he'd got this old map, and he brought in this, what, plastic bag? Plastic bag, <laughs> and it <laughs> was a case of, yeah, yeah, you've and got it a was map. a bag of rags, and I thought, what on earth is this? Yeah. So I said, well, I can't open it up here. So I took it home and opened up the kitchen table. And my wife wasn't too pleased about it. It was in such a poor state. Little bits kept falling yep, off as soon as you touched it. Just a it. mess, yeah. So we opened it up very carefully and gingerly in the kitchen table. And then when I saw the cartouche with King William, William III, that allowed us to delimit it to 1689 to 1707. So basically we knew it was in the 1690s. Yep. So we thought, well, this is obviously a very old map, but in desperately poor condition. And when you, when I managed to, I just opened it out once, when it was Hollandia Nova, Yes. you know, not Australia, you thought, well, this thing is obviously very, very old. So very carefully put it all back together in the, in the plastic bag. And I lost touch with Brian yeah, yeah. for quite moved a while, on it, yeah. so I moved on. Blocking. It was just getting cables through, and this thing was stuffed in a hole and I pulled it out and I could see that there was, um, but mice had been using it as a nest, so it was full of, you know, you know, my shit and that. So I, I, I uh, but I could see the little bits of uh, writing on it. And, and so I thought, it's pretty interesting. It looks looks like an antique. So I, I put it inside a bin, ba you know, bin liner and then put it, in the, put it in my van because they were throwing stuff in the skip willy nilly, you know? So, uh, and then, I took it home and um, as I say we were just staying in a small flat at the time and showed it to Fiona but she said oh you're not taking that in here I mean we didn't even have a garage you know? so basically he came into my garage and we unfolded this uh, well the map on the floor we did it and then we rolled it up and I put it into a big paint container and stored it away basically. So for the next 10 years it was in and out the paint container showing to friends and hence till I met Brian. <laughs> it was an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. To find the actual house where it came yeah. from yeah. was going to be probably impossible. Yeah. So a lot of work colleagues that I'm still friendly with couldn't remember how far back, where and when they were working. So every time I got a, a house that this could have been working at, I would pass to Brian and set yeah. him off yeah. for about two months, yeah. knocking on doors and looking. And uh, this went on for probably eight months. thought that we'd ever track down the house that the map came from. A lot of time when I was working on it, I imagined the house that it came from. I had a picture in my mind. I didn't actually realise that one day I'd actually be <laughs> looking at the room that the map was found. 
we have definitely confirmed that this is the place where the map came from. Uh, the builders were here uh, in the autumn of 1988. The map was uh, taken away from the house. I knew nothing about it at that stage. In fact, I knew nothing about it until Brian called to see us uh, about two months ago. That's what we believe. That's what the, uh, the builders have told us, is that uh, it was in the first floor here when this, when this uh, ceiling was being taken down uh, above this room. That's when the, uh, the map fell into the room. The map, of course, is is hugely important to my family. It, it was found in our house. It was found under the uh, bedroom that my daughters uh, used. Now, what I would like to do is, is, is get a copy of the map uh, for each of them. Uh, and, but particularly, I'd like to have one myself and be able to study it uh, for longer. I, I looked at the floor, I took a handful to throw into the bin and my brain said at that time just don't be lazy this could be important to somebody yeah, yeah. and I threw it back into the map and yeah. rolled it up yeah. and there was hundreds of little bits I swept oh, yeah, up easy, yeah. with a dry paintbrush actually <laughs> off the floor <laughs> and just put it in. very much spent my childhood there, with me and my brother and uh, our family. It's been, it's been in the same family, so Gordons of Clooney have, which is my family, have, have been in possession of the house since it was built. And it dates back to the early 1400s, being a small tower. So I first heard about the map um, by Les Yule calling the castle office, the estate office. It was hugely exciting. It was just it was a fascinating story. And regardless of, of, of any connection to Clooney, potentially to Clooney, um, it's, it's, it's a fascinating story. Uh, and, and the idea that there may be some um, possibility that Clooney, you know, the castle, uh, is integrated with the story, it just makes it even more enthralling, really. Uh, I was gripped from the word go. <laughs> Clooney, the estate, uh, and, and indeed the castle, um, at the time of the late 17th century, it was, it was very unique. The estate was one of the largest, if not the largest estate in Scotland. And the estate um, not only covered large parts of Scotland, but it covered uh, islands such as Tobago. Um, and we had, there was large control over the, over the industry there. So yes, there was a lot of foreign trade. Yeah, I think the only reason why one would display a map of that kind is to, is to show it off. I mean, it, and not only was it, you know, is it a masterpiece, it was certainly a masterpiece back then, but it also would display uh, your one's relationship you have with the king. You say, look, I've been given this fantastic map by the king. I think that's worth talking about. I'd like to think that it would be an item that one would mark down on an inventory because it's so important, but I, I'm also unsure of how close an eye my ancestor kept on the possessions within the house. Considering that the estate was so large, it'd be very strange to think that such a large estate, there's such a large estate in, in, in Aberdeen and whatever, and stretching down to Edinburgh and overseas, that a house less than a stone's throw away from the castle walls would not be part of the estate. It really is less than the stones for away.
We're standing at the moment in a very old part, an old fortified tower, which was here long before the Frasers actually came here. And so it dates before 1450. And the third Lord Fraser died in 1674. So the fourth Lord Fraser in, in the 1690s was already established here. He was the layout. When he inherited, he inherited uh, an estate which was crippled by debts and he was obliged to mortgage the castle and the lands around here to the Earl of Mar. The routine was that you came up the staircase here uh, and depending on who you were, you were then invited into the Laird's withdrawing room, which is in here, and through into the long gallery, which is where he kept his best pictures. So if you had it, you flaunted it, and, and I expect he would have you know, boasted about it to his friends if they visited, certainly, just as he would the latest portraits he had had painted of himself. Also, of course, there is a question of could he afford to buy such a map? Mm -hmm. And I, the answer has to be definitely no, <laughs> because he was in dire debt. And, and Eliza, born in 1734, inherited Castle Fraser in 1792 and was laid here until she died here in 1814. Uh, when Mary Brister died in 1805, Eliza was already in her 70s, so she was quite an old woman and apparently she wasn't very well. And I think the, the death of uh, Mary Brister was the last straw and Eliza took to her bed when Mary Brister died and stayed in her bed until she died in 1814. But the Eliza, of course, being bedridden, she was very vulnerable. She was bedridden up here. What was going on down on the ground floor? It was anybody's guess. The picture frames were all empty. And we know pictures went in, whether it was a map as well, which had been in a frame. You know, we have no way of knowing if it was still here or if it... We don't know what was taken, basically. The day that the map went on display at the library was really good because everybody had come down from Aberdeen. I was, I was absolutely overawed by seeing the whole thing for the first time. But actually, to see the map as a whole. You know, I, I could spend days just staring at bits of that map. The picture of the devil was, just took my eye because of the size of it. To be honest, I would stare at it and I was fixated on this devil <laughs> painting. There's, there's such a lot of small details. The ship battles, the, the uh, figures on the map, the, the coastline. I, th I think it's, it's actually got to the right place. I think it's important because it is so special. I think it should be kept on display uh, to be able to see it. I think it would be just be great if we could get the map or a copy of the map back on display yeah. somewhere up here. There's a little goat down in the bottom right hand corner um, standing on a, a mountain top and I think that's got to be one of my favourite bits.